message today because it's from Isaiah 53, and that's the healer. And I was surprised when I got on uh, Google, and uh, they said that it was written by a man in Australia, and he was the youth pastor in a large uh, a church there. His father pastored the church, and he was a youth pastor. And he wrote this song, and he told everybody that he was dying of cancer. And we found out later it was a lie. So the point that I want to get across to you is that many people come to church to worship a singer. Some come to church to worship a song. But we're supposed to come to church to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. He should be the center of the song. He should get all our applause and all our praise because it's only what Jesus has done that gives us the blessings that we have today. Brother Ed, ask the Lord to bless. I really need a strengthening in my spirit this morning. I'm kind of attacked a little bit. Father God, how grateful we are that we can come into your house, Lord. Lord, that we can worship you and thank you for who you are. Father God, we ask right now, Father, that you just bless our pastor, Father God. Relieve him of any anxiety, Lord, that may be attacking him right now, Father. And Lord, just, just bless him, Lord, and open his ears to deliver the message that you have, Father, and open our ears to hear what you're saying. Lord God, we thank you for who you are in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everything that we say and everything that we do should be to the praise of our Savior, amen? Amen. Of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? Let's be respectful to, the, to our Heavenly Father and to His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. But I'd like for you to turn to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. We're going to read the whole chapter this morning, so bear amen. with me. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Let me tell you something, folks. I'm going to try and bring some things out today that are absolutely foreign to many people in the church. Jesus Christ was not a handsome man. He was not one to look upon uh, and want as the movie stars and many of our uh, people today. Amen? Amen? He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we have hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Now that's probably the most popular scripture to many people. In fact, it's probably the only scripture in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah that many people even know. Amen? I'm going to try and show you something today. We like, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's bought, brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before the shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in death. He, because he had done no, no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord, his father. It, pre, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt, listen, listen. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and shall be, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul, 
and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. I want you to pay attention today. Please, 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 folks. We're, we're getting away from the candy and the sugar-coated stuff that so many, that's all they hear in church. 2 Corinthians 5.21, let me read that to you. I can quote it, but I want to read it to you. 2 Corinthians 5.21, you should know it by heart. For he hath made him, God the Father, hath made him, God the Son, to be sin. God the Father made Jesus Christ to be sin. Y'all got that? For us who knew no sin, Jesus knew no sin, that we, you and I today, might be made the righteousness of God in Him. The right We are the righteousness of God. Understand that, folks. And it might make a big difference in your idea of what church is about. Church is not an entertainment center. It's not a place to where we bring you together to make you laugh and tell funny stories. It's a place that we hope you assemble to praise and to worship God Amen. and to receive what He has for you. It's a time of seriousness. It's a time to really understand who we are and who He is Amen. and who He is in our lives. Amen. Amen. Easter's past, folks. I don't know whether you knew that or not. The tears, the programs, the egg hunts, the circus celebration, the parties, and the large dinners are over. That, to many, is what Easter is about. Isn't that a shame? Yes. Isn't right. that a stinking, rotten, crying shame? Amen. You know why? Because the church, the modern-day church, is ignorant of what Easter or Resurrection Sunday is all about. Stay with me. I want you to really I want you to learn something today. I don't care whether you like me or not, and I'm not here to make you happy or make you laugh. I'm here to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Now, let's, let's look at what resurre Resurrection Day truly is all about. The resurrection from the grave, absolutely. The resurrection from the grave by our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. But what happened? Did you ever stop to think, folks? Have you ever stopped to even take time to read about Jesus Christ? Oh, I've read John 3.16. I've read the book of John. You need to get out of the book of John and get up into the Gospels. I mean, into the, the epistles. What happened between the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection? All we hear about anymore is the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. The cross was just two pieces of wood nailed together. You all got that? You got that? You all understand that? It's the one that was on the cross that's so important. Yes. Right. And let me tell you something. It wasn't just the one on the cross shedding his blood and dying on that cross. There's so much more to what Resurrection Sunday is all about. You with me, David? Listen to me today. Stay. Don't get up and leave because I want you to hear this. That's important, really, that is important about the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. That's so important to our salvation, but there, there's so much more, folks, so much more. And the more that I come to the realization of what happened, it really and truly breaks my heart and causes me to judge myself and begin to check me rather than you. Amen? You need to... Confess your sins to the precious Savior. Confess your faults to the precious Savior. You need to repent. Amen. I need to repent. Amen. We all fall short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you're just a horrible, horrible person. I'm going to show you something here in a little bit. In many cases, the resurrection and what happened while Christ was hanging 
dead on the cross before they took him down and even afterwards is due to ignorance of scriptures or else it's just deemed unimportant by many. <coughs> many many preachers won't even won't even get into what I'm trying to get into today. Because, listen to me, because Jesus was made sin. Is that right or not? Can you prove it? Well, if you if you were listening a minute ago, you would have been able to prove it in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. He was made sin. The Father made Jesus to be sin. He was impregnated with sin. He became the very, the very essence of the very nature of sin. Understand today, folks. Understand. Oh, we get so teary-eyed about this Jesus hanging on the cross. Listen to me. The night before Jesus was crucified and we're going to have communion, he sat down with his disciples and was having a meal. All right? And they were having a big time. I imagine they were talking about their chariot uh, uh, bills and all these other things. And all of a sudden in the middle of the meal, Jesus stops and he begins to talk about things that they had no idea even what he was talking about. He's going to be leaving them. And so he was trying to get across to them about what was going to happen to him. He was, listen to me, Jesus was banished. Banished, listen to me this morning. He was banished from his father's presence as a hideous, loathsome thing. Think about that. Here is the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten son of the great God Jehovah. He was banished, pushed away. The Father couldn't look at him. The Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ satisfied the claims of the holy justice by himself. Listen, by himself. Body on the cross. Soul and spirit. This is what's not being taught, my friends. All we know about is Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the grave. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God he did. Amen. But what did he go through? Listen to me, friends. This nails through the, through the wrists and through the feet, the thorns on the head, the spear in the side, the whipping was nothing, nothing compared to what he went to when he went down into hell and became your sin and mine. That's what we've got to get back to. When we get back to that place, then we feel the spirit of repentance come across us. Amen. Then we feel the spirit of, I am so unworthy of eternal life with God the Father had it not been for what Jesus Christ did. Are you all with me so far? Amen. He satisfied. He satisfied the claim for justice by his body, his soul, and spirit. And he did that for the sins of the whole world. It, it, was, it was as if, listen, it was as if Jesus were actually guilty for the total sum of all the sins from Adam's time right up to the end. That's hard to grasp, isn't it? Yes. That's hard for me to understand. But then, you know, I believe what the Word of God says. Amen. I walk Amen. by faith and not by sight. Amen. I don't walk by my understanding because it's not possible for me to understand the mind of God Amen. and why He would put the sins, your sins, your sins, your sins, your sins, and my sins on His sinless Son. I can't understand that. Amen. His soul, listen to me, listen to me. His soul... His soul was made an offering for sin. The sins of all generations, my friends. His soul. This is something you don't hear. You don't hear anything about the soul and the spirit of, of Jesus, do we? All we hear is about the physical man hanging on the cross and the physical pain that he went was nothing compared to the horrible spiritual pain that Jesus went through. His soul, his soul was made an offering for sin, the sins of all the generations. In Isaiah 53, 10, it says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief. 
when thou shalt make his soul, thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Bible says? That's not what Ellsworth says. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Jesus Christ. Oh my goodness, folks. Amen. Make his soul an offering for sin. Mm. My goodness, you know, I, I never, truthfully, and, I mean, until I really got to studying for this, I never realized, totally realized, understood what Jesus did for me. God's justice, listen to me, God's justice demands that the full penalty for every, every sin of all mankind be made by someone. Not an angel. Amen. Had to be made by a physical man. Jesus left the glories of heaven and come down and took on flesh so that he could look forward to what he did the day that he hung on the cross and died. And then phew, the body was there. We don't worship the body. We worship that spirit man that Amen. died for you and I. Amen. Yeah. The extreme, oh my goodness, folks, the extreme penalty had to be paid. The extreme penalty had to be paid. Not just the nails in the wrist, not just the thorns on the head, not just the spear in the side, not just the horrible whipping and the horrible things that were said and being spat on. The extreme penalty had to be paid. Listen, listen, listen. Christ must taste death for every man. No, no, that's not just Ellsworth. That's, look it up real quick, Hebrews 2.9. Hebrews 2.9. He had to taste death for every man. He had to taste death for every man. You all got that? That's what the word says, Hebrews 2.9. Uh, Christ had to suffer all the torment. Listen to me. Listen to me. He had to suffer all the torment and pain that man without God would have to suffer once and for all. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'm not talking about coming to church. That's not knowing Jesus Christ, my friends. I'm not talking about getting up here and singing a hymn. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about knowing Jesus Christ to the extent that He becomes part of you. He lives within you. You have accepted Him as your Savior. Stuart Hamblin, that wrote so many beautiful songs, at one time was a drunk and a brawler and in and out of prison. How many of you knew that? Uh, Stuart Hamlin. And one day he met Jesus at a Billy Graham crusade. <coughs> the song, It Is No Secret. Do you know who gave him the title for that? John Wayne. John Wayne come to visit him to see what had happened in his life that caused him to change. And John Wayne says, it is no secret. And Hamlin wrote a song. It is no secret what God can do. Listen, listen today. And try and understand, please. I think if you fully understand, well, we'll never fully understand, but if, if we can understand just a little bit, folks, just a little bit, I think our lives will change. We'll begin to lay self. That, this is the biggest problem with most people in the church. Self is taking over. Lay self aside. Amen. Lay self aside. Amen. Quit looking for the applause and the glory from man. Lay self aside and lift up Jesus. Amen. 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 Jesus, Jesus, holy, loving Father turned him over. Not, not, not only, listen to me, not only to the agony and the death of Calvary, but God the Father turned God the Son over to the satanic tortures, to his pure spirit. Listen to what I'm saying, folks. For the, sin of the, for the sin of the human race. 
God the Father turned Jesus' spirit over. The spirit man has to pay. Listen to what I'm saying. Listen to me today. What Jesus Christ did on the cross paid for your healing. But to pay for your sin, that spirit man had to endure the tortures and the torment of Satan. You didn't know that. He was Satan. He was in Satan's hands. He was at Satan's mercy for you and I. Amen. If he hadn't have done it, Frank, you'd have had to do it. I'd have had to do it. You would have had it. You got what I'm saying? The penalty for sin has to be paid. And only one could do it. The only begotten Son of God. Isn't that something? Amen. I'm thankful for Jesus today, Amen. aren't you? Amen. I'm thankful for Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm thankful for the help that I endure and I, or, or I'm blessed with. I'm thankful for the home that I have to live in. I'm thankful for the car that I have to drive. I'm thankful for the food that He gives me and the finances that He gives me. But I'm thankful for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for Jesus. Aren't you? Amen. I'm thankful for Jesus. Say amen. 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 The agonies, the pain, the suffering which Christ endured in, oh, listen to me, in that horrible place called hell. Now there are those that will argue with me till the moon turns to cheese that Jesus did not go to hell, but Jesus Christ went to hell. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. amen. If you don't believe it, then you need to read your word and put your comic books and all the rest of the junk that you're walking, working and reading and studying and listening to on television and read your word. If you don't believe that Jesus went to hell, sometime, take time to read Psalms 88. You and I, listen to me, you and I cannot comprehend the death of agony of the anguish, folks, that our Savior endured, that we might not be called wicked. You are not a wicked person. Understand that if you're saved, you're not wicked. Now, you fall short of the glory of God, but I don't care what you, you come up with, you're not wicked. A wicked person is one that is not saved, that hasn't been washed in the blood. If you're washed in the blood, your sins have been washed away. Amen. Because Jesus became that wicked person that you and I might become the righteousness of God in Him. Is that right or not? Amen. All right. But you and I today are not called wicked. We are called a child of God. Is that right? Amen. We are called an heir of God and a joint heir with the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Is that what the Word says, Ed? That's what the Word says. The Word says... I am a heir of God and a joint heir with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 53, 12. Oh my. He poured out His soul unto death. He poured out His soul unto death. Now those that don't think Jesus Christ died, you better get a mark a lot and mark that out of your body. Jesus Christ died, didn't he? Didn't he? Jesus Christ literally, physically died. Right. He, the Lord Jesus Christ, suffered. Oh my goodness. Suffered in our stead until in the mind, listen to me, till in the mind of his heavenly Father, the claims of eternal justice were met. Folks, People have been playing church so long that they don't really understand what it means to be a Christian. They don't understand. They think it's just, well, let's get our Sunday go to, no, Sunday go to meeting clothes. They don't have that anymore, do they? And go to church and feel good, you know, and the pastor is going to tell us some sweet thing or some funny thing, but that's not what it's about. Isaiah 53, 11. He shall see of the travail of his soul. God the Father shall see the travail of Jesus Christ's soul. Listen, that's what it says. I'm reading it right out there. Of his soul and shall be satisfied. God the Father 
had to be satisfied. Right, amen. Shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Listen to what God the Father says again. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, who was God's righteous servant? Jesus. Jesus. By, <laughs> by my righteous servant justify many. You and I are justified today because of the righteous servant of God, His only begotten Son. Amen. Surely that's what the Word says. That's what the Word says. Amen. Amen. For He shall bear the iniquities. He shall bear their iniquities. Oh, my goodness. We need, to, we need to thank Him. We need to praise Him. Yes. We need to love Him for His unselfishness and I'm talking about Jesus now and his dedication to the task that was before him. Do you know there are many in the church that have tasks before them but they're not faithful to them? Jesus, I'm so thankful today. I'm thankful that Jesus was dedicated and surrendered to the task. And his task, listen, he knew. He knew what lay ahead of him was to die for me, was to become sin for me. Isn't that something? For me. Now you better, you better start claiming that on a personal basis. Amen. Oh, we say he died for the sins of the world. That's true. But I'm concerned about the sins for Larry Ellsworth. Yes, amen. And as we're praising him at the same time, we need to thank our Heavenly Father for sparing not his only begotten son for us. As stated in Romans 8.32, if you want to look it up, Romans 8.32. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He that God the Father spared not his only son, but gave him up, gave him up. For all of us, and that's something. And now, and now, before we go to communion, I hope now that John three sixteen has a deeper meaning to you. Do you know every little child learns in Sunday school John three sixteen? And too many people stand on that scripture. Unless you become as a little child, you'll not enter the king. It's time that you become a mature Christian. And stood up and quit being childish in your the things that you say and the things that you do. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me tell you something. Some of the Bibles, some of the Bibles, it doesn't say his only begotten son. John 3, 16. Some of them just say his son. That, that's not proper. His only begotten son. He's got many sons and daughters. If you're saved, you're a son, but you're not his only begotten son. Right. Amen. And so this is, folks, this is why I'm telling you, get rid of those perversions and get back to the good old time in King James Bible. And I'm telling you, even the new King James, you've got to watch it. I don't know, maybe that's one of the places where it leaves that out. They leave out the fact that he's only God's only begotten son. They leave out the fact of his blood. For without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. They leave out the portion that says, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. <coughs> what have you got? You've got nothing. You've got nothing. Without, without the only begotten Son and his shed blood and the fact that he went down into the bowels of hell and Amen. paid the price. Amen. Amen. took the keys of death and hell out of the hands of Satan. Amen. I'm thankful today that I am a victor in Christ. Yes, amen. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. Amen. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yes, it's all, listen folks, we've got to get back to Jesus and forget the Baptist, the Methodist, the Lutheran, the Episcopalian, the Catholic, the Jews, the full gospel. Let's get back to Jesus. We're Christians. Amen. Amen. Washers, come forward if you would, please. Let's take...
communion together today and remember. Remember what Jesus did for you. When we partake of these emblems, try and try and in your mind, if you can, picture what our precious Savior did for us. Go ahead and pass them up. Oh, I thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. You notice how that song says, for giving to me. He gave it to you, friends. He gave it to you. All you have to do is reach out and receive it. Say, come and be Lord of my life, Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. I confess. Listen, I can't confess every sin that I've ever done. It's impossible, friends. But I can confess that I was a sinner saved by grace. I can confess that the only way I'll ever see the Heavenly Father is by accepting the only begotten Son. Amen. Mm. I want you, I want you to turn real quick. Ed, I want you to do me a favor. Turn to Matthew 7, 14. Brother Brown, have you got your Bible? Can you, you got your glasses? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just one little scripture. It's not that much. Uh, Luke uh, 13, I think it is. Luke 13, 24 and 25. Ed, when you get it, brother, would you, I'm sorry. You gonna be able to handle it? Uh, Matthew, Matthew 7, 14. You can strain us the gate. Listen a minute, folks, listen, listen. You can all talk later, I want you to hear this scripture. Go ahead. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Oh, wow. Isn't that powerful? That's how Matthew saw it. Now, Brother Brown, you read, if you would, Luke 13, 24, and 25. Strive to enter in at the straight gate for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able to. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath that hath shut the door, and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence you are. There is a straight gate, folks. <clears throat> Quit playing church. Quit playing Christian. Quit playing religious. There is a straight way, and that way is only the path that Jesus Christ leads. Amen. Amen. Straight. And then he says, strive. Strive. And Paul said in Hebrews, to lay aside the weight and the sin that so easily besets you. Strive to enter into that straight gate. That means that, folks, some of the, some of the excuses, some of the laziness, some of the self needs to be laid aside. I'm telling you, friends. I'm telling you. Brother Elkin sang that song, The Trumpets at the Angel's Lips. It's getting closer and closer and closer. And I really, really hope when the trumpet sounds that we're all ready to go. I thought all I have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, to believe is to obey. And to obey is to follow. Many people are saying they believe but they don't obey and they don't follow. Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? While you're up, Brother Brown, ask the Lord to bless the cup, would you please? The cup. Please. Do this first. Please bless the cup. <laughs> Father, we thank you, Lord, today. God, as we partake of these emblems, Lord, is... Uh, we take of this resembling your blood, Lord, and we thank you for the shedding of your blood. And Lord, we 
ask that you bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Take and drink all of it. Why did I do that? For without the shedding of blood, not because of the broken body, but it's the blood. <coughs> Respect the blood. Amen. Amen. There's a, there is a there is a reason for everything. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a season for everything, but there's a reason for everything, folks. We have been trampling, I'm talking about the whole body of Christ, have been trampling the blood. Been trampling the blood. You know why? Because we're more interested in healing than we are in anything else, aren't we? We want our bodies whole. All right. Now take the bread. Brother Anderson, ask the Lord to bless. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross our sins. And Father, we thank you for him for what, what he did for the stripes he bore on his back for our healing, for his broken body. We just praise you for him, Lord, and we give you the thanks for it and now bless it. Bless it as we partake of this in remembrance of what you did in Jesus' name. Take and eat all of it. body was ripped and torn and broken for your healing. The blood symbolizes not only the body, but the soul and the spirit. Amen. I'm glad today. I'm yes. glad Amen. today. I am blessed today. Aren't you? Amen. Amen. Oh, he's so good. He is so good. And I thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. For he is Lord, he is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's do one more thing. Let's look at Ephesians, the fourth chapter. Real quick, folks, if you would. Uh, Ed, you still got your Bible open? No, sir. I don't have my glasses. I have far. Uh, Brown, you still got your Beverly's Bible open? Mm -hmm. Okay. If you'll get Acts 217, I'll read Ephesians 4 for you. Ephesians, the fourth chapter and the ninth verse. Now he that ascended, what is it? But he that also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. <clears throat> Those of you that don't believe that Jesus went down into the bowels of the earth, where hell was at that time, how do you know that? The rich man in Lazarus, the rich man was tormented on, in that flame and he looked across the gulf and he saw Lazarus in the bosom of Abraham. And he wanted Lazarus to dip his finger in the water and come over and put a drop of water on his tongue because he was tormented in that flame. Jesus went down and paid the price for you and I. Go ahead, Brother Brown. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Acts 2.17 Acts 2.17 
Well, then I had the wrong scripture written down. What I wanted to hear was, Because thou wilt not leave my son in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. 27. Well, I was close. <laughs> if you knew that, why didn't you read that, right? <laughs> Go ahead. Because thou wilt not leave my son in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Oh my goodness, isn't that amazing? Those of you that don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ went to hell for you, somebody had to. That was the penalty, one of the penalties for sin. Uh, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also now that he ascended, what is it also when he descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Because thou wilt not leave my son in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to seek corruption. Scripture. If you preach something and you can't back it up, <coughs> keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. Amen. 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 I love him for he is mine. I love him for he is divine. I love him forever it seems. He's my Jesus, the Nazarene. Stand with me. Oh, let him breathe, let your hands and receive. Oh, let him breathe on me. Let the breath. Dismiss us in prayer, would you please? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here this morning, Lord, in your presence. Thank you for the word this morning, Father God. We pray that you will just, Father, help us to just keep it in our hearts, Lord, and just meditate on it as we go. Father God, we thank you for this time of communion, Lord, in heaven. Lord. Yes. We could participate, Lord Jesus, of, of this of this. Uh, Amen. Somebody said this isn't the first Sunday of the month, but Jesus said as often as you do this, you do it. Amen. Shake hands, be friendly, and Al's got something good on the table back there. Okay. What? I didn't even pay attention to the old oh, yeah. You did good. I'm just so glad to see you sitting up in the fiery first pew instead of hiding out the back with the backsliders. <laughs> <laughs>